Welcome to the Call Her Sam podcast. I'm Sam. Now, while all of our communities face mental health challenges, black communities often deal with more stigma and discrimination and can receive compromised health care. What happens at the intersection of mental health and one's experience as a member of the black community? We dive into that more. I'll be talking to Niza Lebopiu, who's a multi-talented, creative and hardworking individual with broad skills and experience in multiple fields and industries. She is a qualified and licensed mental health counsellor. Hi Niza. Hi. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thank it's you. a pleasure to have you here. Thank Finally. you so much. <laughs> Finally. Finally. Thank you for having me. Thank it's you for happening. Having me. Thank yeah. you for, for making time. Coming sure. To and talk about this rather important topic I feel has been swept under the mm -hmm. rug for mm -hmm. the longest time. Yeah. And I don't know if it's swept under the rug and also just not refusing to acknowledge that it's right. actually there. Right. So, I'm going to ask you the first question. Why is there a stigma against uh, seeking mental health care mm -hmm. in black communities? And mm -hmm. what does it mean when we say mental health stigma? Yeah, so I think just listening to the question and I want to start by saying thank you for having me here. This is like a more serious, <laughs> serious uh, podcast I've been on. And, um, but we what have I mean fun too here. But the, oh, the, the topic. You. Okay, the topic. thank you for telling we, me we that. We need to emphasize. This is. All, I just need yeah. you to be comfortable. Just be you. Thanks for that. Speak. Yeah. Let's just Who's have really conversations. We're podcast talking about mental health and we're joking and, you know. So, uh, thanks for asking me to be comfortable. I will try. I need you to be comfortable. Um, listening to that question, I think there are a couple of things that jump at me. Firstly, we're talking about uh, black communities, right? And mm -hmm. I've worked across different communities and uh, been able to care for people from different demographics, right? And... Um, it's a cultural thing across mm. the board mm. uh, not just black communities but also uh, we can talk about other communities whether it's um, you know uh, Christian communities even religious circles or it's also Muslim communities it's a cultural thing mm. um, and culture is people right and what they believe in and how they have been conditioned yes. so if you're talking about culture it's really how were you raised yeah. Right, where you raised in the in the house where you are allowed to express yourselves, and when you did express yourself, how was um, your expression received? How was it mm. dealt with? And depending on what happened there, you've been conditioned into your adulthood to just follow through. So yes. if you are dismissed, you definitely going to struggle um, with expressing yourself. Mm. I like that. Mm. Um, if the question is stigma, then we obviously have to point back to. Um, cultural issues mm -hmm. and by cultural issues I mean the people because culture is made up of people yes. and what the people believe and what the people align with is what then forms culture so we'll say in our culture we'll say in our home mm -hmm. we were not allowed to express ourselves no we're not right so as a child if you disliked something your parents did were you able to express yourself and tell your mom or your dad or your guardians I'm not happy Right? What do you think you are <laughs> telling me you're not right? happy in my house? Right? And so when you talk about therapy, when you talk about mental health care, yeah. it's really about expressing yourself. And where there's a lack of self-expression, there's harboring of emotions and thoughts, right? Uh -huh. And they manifest differently within our society. And when they did manifest, maybe growing up, we said, oh, Uli Ali Penal, that person is mad, right? Uh -huh. It manifested in a certain way where they were dirt, where they were in the streets. And so that in itself creates the stigma in that we look at those people as the people with the mental condition yeah. and yeah. us as people who are okay, yeah. not knowing that either we are harboring or we are facilitating the break of the mental health mm -hmm. well-being. Mm -hmm. The harboring, I think mm -hmm. a lot of people mm -hmm. walk around with so many things kept up inside. So mm -hmm. it, and I believe that things you keep inside kind of start to show themselves outside. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you're keeping everything in and yeah. it just starts to manifest, yeah. it just starts to show outside. Yeah. And that's how you have so many people acting out and you're like, but mm -hmm. why are you acting out? Mm -hmm. well, what's the problem? Right. Because we've been just right. conditioned to just harbor everything keep it keep it keep push it down just keep pushing push mm -hmm. push 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 yeah. until you reach your breaking point yeah now what are the biggest um mental health challenges facing mm -hmm. black communities right uh, there are a lot 
right there are a lot and i like to firstly differentiate when we say mental health we are talking about the state of well-being right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the cognitive emotional behavioral well-being mm -hmm. of an individual that's mental health mm -hmm. but then when we talk about mental health illnesses mm -hmm. or conditions these would differ and some of the most prevalent um in uh, zambia or even in black communities we're talking about depression we're talking about anxiety mm -hmm. um we're talking about schizophrenia as well and recently a lot of of us who attest to this there's been a lot of drug and substance abuse right that is a manifestation of a condition that has not been treated so wait, or dealt with when you say substance does alcohol come into it so uh, substance we're talking about alcohol we're talking about prescription medication we're talking about your drugs whether it's prescription drugs or non-prescription drugs uh -huh. uh, so any substance that um, you know you may abuse you may take to self numb to self soothe to mm -hmm. want to uh, manage whatever it is that you're going through to mm -hmm. a point where you abuse mm -hmm. then that's definitely one of them so when we're talking about substance and drug abuse yes alcohol is covered there of course there are others like sex like work mm -hmm. all these are things that we use to self numb so all those are just now the manifestations of untreated so, uh, mental so conditions when you said sex that's where the addiction comes in that's like a sex mm -hmm. addict mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And not many people know that yeah, that's a... Not so many people know. And I mean, that's where partly the stigma comes from. Because, mm. I mean, sex is celebrated world over. So now when you're talking about... <laughs> uh, maybe in, 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 in close maybe, circles, yes, I mean. in, in close, close circles, circles, probably, so, yes. But not out yes. there, like... Yes. Oh, yeah! Yes. Let's talk about... So when it's <laughs> abused, when it is used to manage mm. uh, condition or manage emotions or undesired thoughts, mm -hmm. then that's when now we can say, oh, okay, uh, now it's being abused. So mm. when you have people come to you and say, you say, oh, I'm a therapist, mm -hmm. and they say to you, oh, Nisa, listen, <laughs> black people don't do therapy. Mm -hmm. That's a white people thing. Yeah. I don't believe in telling my problems to people. Yeah. Uh, telling my business yeah. to everybody. So yeah. when someone says that to you, mm -hmm. how do you handle that? Because I've heard this so many, even just in my own circles, I people say, well, that's a white people thing. Right. Therapy? Oh, wow. Black people? No, yeah. never. Yeah. So how do you bring someone around to mm -hmm. like, okay, not, not obviously <laughs> ch convert, no, change them mm -hmm. because change is, you know, it's not overnight, but mm -hmm. how do you just maybe manage to get through to them, just even that 1% or 2%? Hmm. Firstly, I'm going to say I am happy. Uh -huh. I never have to encounter people who come to me and say, you know, because usually what happens is whenever somebody approaches me for my care, for my support, mm -hmm. it's somebody who has decided mm -hmm. that they want this relationship so that they can, yeah. uh, you know, but mm -hmm. I have come across a lot of such sentiments through social media mm -hmm. and just through conversations with friends. Yeah. So I think I was on Twitter recently and somebody actually mentioned an alcohol brand yeah. and said uh, this brand will cost me X amount mm -hmm. while therapy will cost me this amount. I would rather buy a bottle off, right? And sometimes people will just screenshot and send it to me. And my, my thought is always, people are allowed to have an opinion yes. and we must respect that their opinion has a root. And for as long as we don't know the roots, there's only so much I can do from this end. Uh -huh. But it's now a conversation of close circles. Uh -huh. um, and when I say it's, it's a conversation of close circles, it's because whenever you, if you called me and said, I have a friend who needs therapy. Yeah. The first question I'm going to ask you is, is your friend ready and willing to mm -hmm. receive help? Mm -hmm. Because as they come to me and we form that relationship and we start that process, there's work that they have to do. Yeah. There's homework that I'm going to give them from time to time. And it's long term, right? For some it's short term, it's one session and they feel, oh, I'm clear about the yes, next move. But yes. for some it's long term. And so are they willing, are they ready to mm -hmm. do this, of which we can't force anyone. And that's yeah. the beauty about this. No one should be forced, and because that's the case, um, I'm always asking people to have a conversation with your person, because you're asking yeah. me what I do, but I tell people, have a conversation with your friend, and talk to them about what some of the benefits could be, mm -hmm. and tell them how this could help them, mm -hmm. and when they've decided, then let me know and we can start from somewhere. So I don't directly ever have to hold such conversations. Ah. Mm -hmm. Now, there is a cultural... Mm -hmm. um, mistrust when it comes to therapy because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've had a few people say 
they don't want to speak to black therapists because Ooh. there is a judgment. <laughs> yeah. They don't feel safe. Mm -hmm. So they'd rather speak to a white therapist. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. well, obviously, you know, I've had people say that to me and I'm like, well, don't you think it's better to, well, mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't matter, black, white, Puerto Rican, I, 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 it doesn't matter for me, but I'm thinking, wouldn't you rather speak to a black therapist because they'll know where you're coming from. Right, right. So, but Ooh, then that's a good one. Yeah. Where does this come from? Why don't yeah. we want to speak to? Yeah. Black therapists. Yeah. Would rather speak to <laughs> none. I think for me, it goes back to conditioning. I mean, if you grew up in uh, communities, we probably had auntie so and so, auntie so and so, <laughs> stand by the road and talk about that family. So mm. what we were exposed to mm -hmm. is gossip. What we we're exposed to is just the whole situation of my story is not safe with auntie. Because even in our families, ah. you tell auntie so and so and so and so cause a family meeting yes. because your daughter, right? Said. So that in itself creates a form of um, conditioning in that it becomes difficult to trust. But mm -hmm. another thing is this. Um, where is this thing called therapy coming from and where are we seeing it? Mm -hmm. We're seeing it a lot, especially with talk therapy or coaching, we're seeing it a lot from the West. Mm -hmm. So we, we know a, a psychologist who's white, right? Uh -huh. We know a coach who's white. And so because we've heard them speak and it sounds some sort of, you know, put together, yes. the minute you hear Niza speaking, you're like, hmm, maybe not. And I respect that. <laughs> I respect that, right? And I'll, I'll tell you this, every time somebody reaches out to me and they're like, oh, how much are your sessions? Or can I have a session with you? I have a list of four others, two a white, two a black. And I always tell people, must you need a white male option, white, black, or white, you know, give them options because they have their own preferences and that's where they are hinged. Okay. Me, it must be this person that must look like this. Mm -hmm. and. It's, it's pretty much that and um, I think also within our culture we kind of have this attitude that our parents were never equipped and they didn't know how to receive our emotions yes. and care for them yes. so we then generalize it and make it seem as though oh it's everybody one of the things that I get to hear a lot is whenever I'm attending to younger people mm -hmm. you know let's say 18 to about 20 years 25 26 uh -huh. they always say I want a young Therapist. therapist or I want a young and when you they say, feel they can relate to that exactly and they'll say oh the older ones will judge the older ones will judge right and you finish that I don't have to say that so there's that attitude and there's that perception for some it's from experience sadly mm -hmm. but for others it's just basically a reference to a certain conditioning through upbringing yeah. if you are dismissed growing up by your parents you think a black person especially one older who looks like your mom or speaks like your dad is going to dismiss you so yes. immediately you're like i prefer this a, option yeah yes a younger person or a younger I just person a white person they must have a different skin from my mom and dad <laughs> <laughs> yeah the, the couple people i've spoken to said okay mm. well when i went to see a white therapist they were mm. very understand they made me feel comfortable they're like okay so mm -hmm. and maybe mm -hmm. they said it was wow. the voice the tone they were like <laughs> so soothing yeah. and when they went to see a black therapist it was kind of like like you said it kind of gives you that reminds you of your auntie okay so they're berating you now and then they're kind of like they're being condescending so they don't feel comfortable mm -hmm. of which some it's okay to have a preference right it's okay what is important is go get the help so if you're getting the help and you have one session with Niza and mm -hmm. you feel some type of way, whether you understand what that type of way is or not, please go get help. Just tell Niza, Niza, can you refer me to somebody else? Yeah. Let me go speak to somebody else. But again, listen, if, if you've, you've watched a movie probably, right? Mm -hmm. And there was a white therapist. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. That's where the conditioning starts. <laughs> you hear and you're exposed to how they speak and how they sit this position. And, very soothing, and, and then they make you feel comfortable right? and they're like, just let, and let, 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 let it now, let it yeah. go. And then, of course, you see the, the, the black therapist and they're like, so tell me how you feel. It, and it was the expression uh, for me, uh, it was the expression on their uh -huh, face because uh -huh, it came uh -huh. off as a little bit stern. Mm -hmm. So I was like, uh, I, don't, I don't feel... Right. Like, didn't feel comfortable. comfortable. So didn't feel comfortable. Like, uh, didn't feel comfortable. Uh, and that's okay. And that's really okay. What I always advise people to do is please always feel free to give feedback to the therapist. Mm. The therapist will not get hurt by your feedback. Please tell them, can I please have another option? Or can uh -huh. I please, if you're, if you're being attended to at a center, 
in an institution, yeah. speak to whoever the contact admin person yeah. is and ask to get a different pairing. Yeah. And then they give you another person to attend to you. But it's okay to have a preference. We could be more open-minded. Mm. We could be more open-minded. In my season of going through therapy at the beginning, before mm -hmm. I even got into um, mental health care myself, I remember being having to change therapists three times. Why? And without my request, right? So immediately that made me feel some type wait, of wait, way. Wait, wait, wait. They changed therapists without asking you or without speaking to you about it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and I think in retrospect, I have more understanding of what was happening. So it was a public space. Okay. And it was a public center. And um, it, it was pretty much the case of I start my sessions. First, there's a diagnosis from a private practitioner. Uh -huh. So I go for therapy and I get my first pairing and yeah. the session goes some type of way. So when I go back, I'm given another person because the first person had been sent out for training or whatever because of their institution. So okay. in retrospect, at the time, I immediately left thinking, you will not make me feel like I can't be fixed. And notice the word I used was, I can't be, be fixed. fixed. Nobody's there to fix you. <laughs> you are fixing yourself. Nobody's there to fix you. There's just somebody there to help you gain perspective yeah. for you to actually navigate whatever the emotions and things are. Mm -hmm. So th there are all these different things. So mm -hmm. that's probably one that I would add to answer your question. Okay. I think I'll be a good therapist. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm kind, I'm patient. Ooh. If only that were true. <laughs> Not that you wouldn't be, but because it takes more than your tone of voice. Um, it takes more than um, your own aura, yeah. right? And I think that's when now we're talking about mm. things like confidentiality. Mm. We're talking about empathy, right? Mm. Even your face says, I am judged right now. <laughs> <laughs> so it takes a little bit more than just a calm voice. And um, I had to start training to really learn that, oh, well, mm. uh, I speak a certain way because of my experience in media. So I can't bring that into a session. But it, it takes a little bit more than that. And if people were chasing after how calm someone is and how they speak, yeah. you'll be missing out on a lot more other benefits mm. beyond mm. how they sound. I never thought of it that way. Mm. Now, is there, you and me come from black households. Yeah. Amazing black households. Yeah. Is there any familial, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. fa was it familial, familial shame mm -hmm. yeah. around yeah. mental health? Because, mm -hmm. how do I say this? I've been around family members mm -hmm. that you'd be like, ah, this person, are you okay? You know, type of thing, and then it's kind of like we didn't want to address the situation. Like I said, again, we'll bury things under the mm -hmm. rug. We love to do that. Mm -hmm. Bury it, whatever, under the mattress, under the rug, under the couch. Just sweep it. We don't want it. We don't want it. We don't. We don't want to face it. We don't want to. Yeah. Come. We don't want to talk about it. Yeah. So, do you think this? I I think there is shame, but do you think there is? Oh, there is. Shame. There really is. And at the beginning of this, you actually mentioned, you know, how we all look at behavior. Uh -huh. We all look at behavior. All I know is, why does Sam speak like that? Which kind of she, 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 you know? With the, and you just, and you, we know. So how were you raised this type of thing? So. And it, it's, it's really there. Like, there's that judgment. Mm. And it starts because we learn things from the home. We learn things in community and whether the community is your school community, which school did you go to, right? Whether the community is your home or your street, that's mm. where we are learning things. That's where we are learning what to do, what to think. That's where we are learning everything. So imagine growing up in your family and you had that uncle who was a drunkard. All you knew is they abused alcohol and there were things that were said. Nobody will ever bother to say oh but what is it going through what could have led to this or why and all we'll say is we'll either say it's spiritual mm -hmm. we'll say it's witchcraft we'll say and, and we love to play the witchcraft exactly we and love to do that. that's how we easily kind of create shame so if ever you have that issue if you ever you feel you're going down a certain road it's likely that you're going to choose first to just hide everything yeah. so there is a lot of shame within our families i mean if every anyone in the home or in the family has ever you just know that oh auntie so and so was pregnant but mm. no one will ever ask or talk about mm. where the baby is hush, hush. 
no and even the silence about that is what now natures the shame because the person is not accorded an opportunity to express to grieve to talk about it so now they go through life just like oh be careful where you go be careful what you say be careful right and that's why we are taught to keep things mm -hmm. keep things if we didn't talk about that we won't likely talk about I failed my grade 12 oh. right I failed my grade 12 yeah and don't talk about it. Yeah. If it's talked about, this shame. This shame, yeah. See? So um, there is a lot of shame that is learned from the family mm -hmm. and um, it's passed on. It's passed on until there's a dire need. That's when you hear family meetings and they're just saying, oh, because even your uncle so-and-so, your, your grandfather. Yeah. And so I, there is a lot of shame. There is a lot of shame that starts Ooh. from the family. That is heavy. Yeah. That is heavy. Yeah. We're well, just being honest. That is heavy. It's, yeah. It's it's taking me back to so many yeah. things. I'm like, oh wait, no, that's why. Oh, so yeah, that's that's heavy. I don't know about you guys. I think I need a moment. Oh. I, I could get like a cigarette break, something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, why do we believe that someone who is suffering or <laughs> has a mental health condition is a sign of? Personal weakness, like why do we think? Oh, like, that question. I like mm -hmm. that question because we hear it all the time. Sam, if I don't have the capacity to deal with your vulnerability, I will make you feel like it's shameful. Wait, if you don't have, just go back. If I don't have the capacity mm -hmm. to deal or hold space for your vulnerability, mm -hmm. I will make you feel like you're being weak. So mm. we hear people say, Get Hallelujah. over yourself. Get over yourself. Put your big girl pants on. Oh, you know, snap out of I've it. I said that before to someone. I'm sorry. I said that. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to. I didn't know any better. I'm sorry. <laughs> you see the power of conversations, right? Now we're apologizing sorry. to people. <laughs> we tell people that. We tell people build mental strength. What we mean in that is I don't have the strength to hold your weakness oh. so i'll make you feel like you're being weak i'll make you feel like you need to get over yourself i'll make you feel because i just don't know i'll tell you this was a time um i would have depressive episodes but it was a mixture of depression and anxiety uh -huh. and at the time i was still working in the media and this one time i was invited to uh, speak at an event uh -huh. and i'm going to speak at this event and i have a nervous breakdown and I'm shaking and I still have to take a ride into, I was in Keto, I needed to take a ride to Ndola to do this. And I'm shaking and I have three hours, I'm on my clock, like, oh my goodness. Yeah. I call a friend, close friend to this day, this is my guy, you know? And the minute I call him and I'm like, this is what's going on and I'm crying and this is what's going on. Yeah. He's in Kalulushi at the time. He drives from Kalulushi to get to me, and when he gets to me, he hugs me. Oh, that's a good friend. Oh, amazing guy. That is amazing. amazing. And he good, hugs good me friend. and he's like, okay, calm down, calm down. I will drive you to Ndola. So as we're driving to Ndola and to a successful word, coming back, you know what he says to me? He said, I know. Momento. I know. And he uses that word, I know. And that is his way that is his understanding that is his perspective he's not a bad person remember he dropped yeah, from no no no, no. <laughs> I, 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 i'm not trying to be like oh how dare he no 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 right. no. that's his way like you said it's his way right. of understanding it's, it's, right it's, so he did what he could thing. in the moment yeah. but he only had so much understanding he only had so much capacity and he did his best to help me <laughs> And I feel that's what happens to a lot of us. I know there's, uh, you know, in circles, somebody says, you know, I think this person may have raped me. And people laugh. They don't know what to do with such information. So your difficult emotions... Do you see what I've just done with that information? I'm right. just like, I'm sorry, what? Why would you laugh? Yeah, Someone first, would first laugh all, because yes, they that, don't have the capacity for pain. that. Yeah. But they don't have the capacity to understand that it's pain. To even ask what happened. To even... so. It's very important to learn that there are all those nitty gritties that are going on within one. Oh. So sometimes people just don't know. So when they make you feel weak, it's okay to be weak. But are you okay to actually be strengthened? You unlike know, the other person. When you just said it's okay to be weak. Yes. I've been in a situation where I've been made to feel like it's not okay. Mm. It's <laughs> Girl, please. Yeah. 
no yeah we don't you have time for that it. yeah yeah it's just go 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 mm. go 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 mm. oh my goodness go. Mm. Yeah. why are you here i don't even know why i called you here you bring up so many things i'm just like wait that was not okay but no. wait how how did i handle this I didn't handle that properly mm. and this wasn't handled properly so it's mm -hmm. yeah i also feel like this is a session from me. oh we can go in there <sighs> we can go no right if we there. go in there <laughs> Hello. Mm -mm. Mm. yeah that's another <laughs> thing it looks good right <laughs> that's no mess it <laughs> that's no mess thank you but listen the thing is it's why are you a human being with a mind that consumes yeah with a soul that feels uh -huh. that leaves in feelings every minute i feel happy i feel sad i feel this i feel that why are you a human and feeling and going through this whole life experience yeah smells you know with your sensory smells make you happy some smells make you sad some are triggering because the things that happen when i smell this right and why are you going That's through life <laughs> <laughs> right? Why are you going through life and you can't be weak? Yeah. Right? Why are you just expected to be strong and all consistently the strong? Because I'm a black woman and I'm expected to be strong all and the that's time a, and never ooh. have a moment of weakness because you were <clears throat> a black woman, pick yourself up. Yeah. And you have to ask and a I don't question, want to be who conditioned us? Who conditioned us who to conditioned believe this? Who said that? Right? Why did they say that? Why did they say that? Could it be that they couldn't deal with the weak black woman? So they wanted to create a strong, strong. unbreakable, independent, go get her. Because I don't know how to deal with you being weak. I don't know how to deal with you having a bad day. I want you to care for me, so I'll make you feel like you're strong, you're good for this, so that I may never be able to care for you. So there are all so, these different scenarios that it's worth thinking about. I grew up that way. I grew up, have everything in control, be mm. put together, yes. you know, speak well, da, yes. da, 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 until you're like, wait. Oh no, I'm gonna make my mistakes. Lisa, oh my goodness. Uh, the fact that you just said that. Uh -huh. Bring it up. <laughs> you know what? When my oh when my dad died, mm. I just remember this one scene. This just it's, it's it's etched in my memory. I always remember this. Mm. I obviously you know I'm 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 eleven years old. I don't know how to mm. handle this. No one's spoken to me about this. No one has asked me how I feel. No one's really explained what's happening. Yeah. You know how it is in our setup. You just, oh, right. did you, okay, right. 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 point A, B, C, D, just deal. Mm -hmm. So I remember on the day um, of burial, mm -hmm. I was with a cousin of mine. Oh, yeah. God. Mm. Yeah. Oh, Lord, I was with a cousin of mine. Yeah. And she says, and you know, I'm, I'm looking at her because it's my cousin. And I'm yeah. like, I'm talking to her. And I'm like, ah, and then she says, no, cool, I say, Koba serious. Mm. So I'm like, mm -hmm. wait, what? and you're 11 years old at yeah. the time. Yeah. So I'm, and then she, and, and we, the reason she says that is because I have to read, I have to be reading in, in church. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh, oh okay, so I, I, mm -hmm. I can't smile or mm -hmm. laugh because mm -hmm. I was just a happy child. I was just like, okay, yeah, right. now to be told, not if you have to say that's it. Like, yeah. yeah. Cut that out. Stop it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of for me at that age, felt I can't smile or laugh anymore in particular settings. So I went through that whole day numb, mm. numb. Yeah. Numb. Yeah. I can't remember the reading. I. I it. It was just. It's a blur. Yeah. 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 Because I was told to. Cosa. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't, cosa, don't cry. Don't. Right. Just be strong. Right. And what what does that when when you're told that and the moments that follow after, yeah. what does that make you believe about yourself? <sighs> that you shouldn't cry. Mm -hmm. You are a strong woman. Mm -hmm. Don't cry, cosa, mm -hmm. cosa. That's mm -hmm. what I made you feel. Right. Cosa. Right. So and that's that's what I carry the whole I'll just be like, okay, make others happy. Get you just right. be strong. Right. A numbing period and then when you wake up and you're like, wait, but I'm human as well. I feel these things. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, ah. they look at you like, Oh wait, what? You you're you're sad? Mm -hmm. What are these things are coming out of your right. eyes? Right. Why? Right. Right. So that's how I 
Right. Yeah. But and how do you then behave towards others who are being weak around you? Yeah. Even now in your adulthood, how do you deal with somebody coming to you and breaking down or, you know, sharing their own difficult emotions? Oh my goodness. Before I'll just be like Right. What is happening here? Right. This is this is awkward stuff. <laughs> right. I got say, but this then now, you know, you're like this is awkward. Now I'm like, wait, I, I bring myself back in and I'm like, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Let's deal with this accordingly. Yeah, yeah. Now you're giving me a therapy session. Yeah. But because I think for somebody who's watching, it's okay to show them that we are who we are yeah. because of some of the things that we've gone through, mm -hmm. right? And the things that we've gone through create these belief systems in which we now function. Mm. So because you function that way, because you believe that I need to be tough. I grew up thinking I'm the firstborn, I'm the caregiver. Yes. Everybody has to be safe. So much happy pressure around on us firstborn. Yes. Yes. Has my sister eaten before I can eat, right? Does she have clothes okay? before I can have yeah. clothes, right? And then you have to start now the work of unlearning that and telling yourself, I need to care for me first mm. so that I can be better equipped and have a better capacity to care for somebody mm. else. So we are taught not to be weak mm. in our community because of certain conversations that we've had and yeah. because people just don't know who taught our parents how to be weak yeah right and i came across this um it was it was an illustration of how generational trauma is passed on mm. and it started with the first generation which is our grand great grandparents or grandparents right yep. and when you see how our grandparents and what they lived through how that translated to our parents mm -hmm. they didn't have time for you know uh emotional Breakdowns support or, or expression yeah. yeah nobody told them so all they did is numb so when you go there with your walk attitude and like at school they taught us to express ourselves they're just like hello <laughs> hello oh, wait, you no, know no, no, in our <laughs> home they'll just tell you do i'm cool is chindik but just behave yourself you're yeah. an adult yeah you're an adult and so um, it's things like that so we have to unlearn we have to learn and I need to dwell on this it's okay to be weak it's okay mm. to be weak even your strong car has days or moments when it's weak and you fix it you take it for care right yeah. so and the, the most interesting thing is that with your with your emotional and your fit your your mental mm. what really happens is that if you don't take care of it your whole body will be affected by it. That's so imagine true. pretending to be mentally strong until one day you crash and your whole body has to take the toll for it. And I know there are some like, we, we'll get up and we'll still push and through. And we'll still push okay. through. No, it's, your it's, body will okay. just be like, nah. It's okay. No, fam. What it's okay. Today? Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. That was a good question. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that was a good question. You almost made me cry. It's okay to cry too. Mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, what do you do? to maintain or improve your mental health because you've been in radio mm -hmm. for how long again? It was about a hundred years. Fourteen plus. <laughs> oh, you've been in radio a hundred years, years girl. Yeah. Now how do you maintain mm. your mental health? What does Nisa do to maintain and improve it? Mm. It's a um it's a lot of things and again that's another amazing question because mm. there are times when we'll say do met do therapy. Yeah. We'll tell people to do therapy as though it's the only thing they need, yep. right? But there are so many different things that an individual needs. And recently I've been introduced um, to, you know, lifestyle medicines, which is like a whole new world of care, okay. which is really that you can take care of your mental well-being through the food that you eat mm -hmm. through how you sleep yeah. through the community that you build yes. right you can build through just how purposeful your life is uh -huh. and what you're doing uh, meditation or mindfulness for me it's always come down to prayer I do not compromise mm. on my moment of prayer because that's when I can actually talk and not really the spiritual warfare prayers that I was taught growing up but I've had to learn my own way of praying like I'm praying is conversation you can't always be casting and binding <laughs> but, but I talk I just talk that's how I then get some form of therapy but it's also community communities mm. are a huge part of my journey just having a sit down with Sam and laughing about nothing or something I know, right? is healing is very very healing so I also enjoy cooking so on a random day I'll just get in the kitchen and sing songs and cook something mm. and just do that I am in therapy I do therapy um, twice a month 
-hmm. and sometimes it's when need arises so mm -hmm. there's times when it's urgent i need to process this the cool thing is that because i'm a mental health caregiver yeah. i'm also supervised so okay. i have a supervisor who i oh, see very good. often and there are times when i'm attending to someone and i'm not sure and i can always be supervised and just share notes with my supervisor mm -hmm. so there are so many different things that i use i enjoy walks i have this 10k walk that i do okay. that is prayer podcast singing stop to take pictures <laughs> and it's my a good morning on a sunday morning that yeah. just helps me release whatever yeah. it is that needs to be released and sleep is important to me i make it oh. a point to take power naps during the course of the day <laughs> <laughs> and thank God for remote working. I can always say, like, you know, at lunch hour, I'm sleeping because power naps. it's just a those. power nap. What do I feel like? <laughs> I haven't power napped in like <laughs> the privileges that some of I us know, have right? that we don't realize. <laughs> You have such a privilege. Power nap, bro. What is it? I know. What does it look I like? Know. I Where can I find this it? From mothers. Like, <laughs> can I get it in a can, please? Where's your toddler? <laughs> Where's your toddler? And it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I do all that. <laughs> That's the self-care. There yeah. are times when one or two work, there are mm -hmm. times when one doesn't work. And trust me, and that's why self-introspection or self-awareness yeah. is also an important thing for me because I know when something is not working, mm -hmm. right? I know when something is not working. I know when, okay, right now, let's just ride this wave. Let's ride the wave. Let's give it three hours. Yeah. Let's give it a day and we'll get back. We'll be fine. Yeah. So just that introspection what is affecting me yeah. um journaling also it helps whether it's voice journaling oh, I, love I just started voice, journaling uh, really so are you writing or are you voice journaling writing really yeah. that's so good I've, I've been writing for the most time i have journals from as far back as 2009 oh wow and i keep them and i go through them and i'm like you are broken child wow. girl i have a journal <laughs> that goes back as far as two months so yeah <laughs> That's a good start. I'm fine. That's a good start. I'm, I'm That's a good start. If you ever feel like, oh, it's getting too tedious, also try um, voice journaling. Talk to yourself. <laughs> Whether you listen to it or you don't, it's okay. A voice journal. Voice journal. Hmm. Just talk to yourself. That would be interesting. Today was hectic and just talk about it. Uh, okay. I'll try that. I'll <laughs> try that. talk about it. Yeah. So last one. What should one do if they're worried about their mental health? Yeah. Um, if you're worried about your own mental health, that is a good place to start because that's very important. We mm -hmm. should all be concerned. Mm -hmm. We should all take better care of ourselves. And so if you're worried, start by first checking in with yourself. And I think these are like basic tools of just how am I? What's going on? And when you say how am I? I want you to observe three things. Mm -hmm. One, observe your emotions. Mm -hmm. What are the dominant emotions that I'm currently feeling? Mm -hmm. Then number two, observe your thoughts. What are the dominant thoughts that I'm having? So thoughts are in three dimensions. There's one, um, consistent questions that you're asking yourself in your mind. And number two, statements that you're making in your mind. And number three, the movies that you keep, so we call it daydreaming, the movies that you keep playing back in your mind. Oh, okay, so, I was going to say, like actual movies or? Well, there's daydreaming movies oh, or okay. playbacks that you get to have in your thoughts. So you keep dwelling on like, oh my gosh, why did I say that there? And you keep I thinking doing about... <laughs> I used to be that person and that's why it's an easy example i used to be that person like five years later you're still thinking like why did i say that <laughs> so that's another no, for me it's why did i do stone, that no, okay. right and you play back the whole incident the whole situation oh wow i have an incident from grade 12 that i still play back what? so yeah and it was quite an empowering moment though but <laughs> so when it comes to thoughts, think about that. What are the statements? What are the uh. questions? What are the movies I play back and forth? Lastly, observe your behavior. Observe your behavior. What time am I waking up? How am I sleeping? Yeah. What am I eating? How am I eating? Right? Am I responding to my friends when they are checking in? Mm. So behavior. Is there anything that you are overdoing or not doing as much? Mm -hmm. So when you check in with yourself, you begin to have some form of perspective or idea of what is and what isn't. So I remember knowing that I love bright colors and mm -hmm. I love taking pictures. Of bright colors? I love right? your jacket, by the way. And one day I woke up, thank you. And all I did was I wanted dull colors. I hated pictures. I didn't want to be in public, not knowing I was actually getting into depression at the time until I got a diagnosis yeah. later. So if you are self-aware, you would know like, okay, wait, I've always liked to have my breakfast out on Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. How come I don't go out Sunday morning anymore? 
right? So first things first, check with yourself. Once you've checked with yourself, remember the importance of building community. So check in with your community. Sam, have you noticed anything, right? And some will give feedback. Hmm. And some may not be a professional, but some might just have some perspective and say, girl, there was a time you said you'd do this. It's been five years, you haven't done it. Yeah. Or there was a time you liked doing this, or you sounded like this, or you sound... Hmm. That gives us feedback, especially if the person is safe. So yeah. number one, check with yourself. Number three, check with your community. Talk yeah. about it. Number three, if there is need, if you're unable to function, if it's getting very overwhelming and foggy within your mind or within your soul mm -hmm. or even with your behaviors, seek professional help. What is professional help? Speak to your counselor, speak to a therapist, speak to a coach, make sure that they are licensed. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing because then perhaps they are supervised as well so you can get professional mm -hmm. help. Yeah, those three should do. Mm. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you for coming through. Thank you for having for me. For almost making me cry. Thank you so much. <laughs> That's no easy feat, but thank you. Wow. <laughs> you are so welcome. And thank you. we'll get into a session right after this. Oh, no. 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 But if I can, are you in therapy? Um, no. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. What has been your experience with therapy and why aren't you in therapy? I'm not in therapy because, like you said, you have your community. So that's mm -hmm. kind of my therapy. Great. I guess so. I have my Great. community. So Great. that is, yes, that Great. is my therapy. Great. I have prayer as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes I just have me, eh? Like, mm -hmm. you know, just, mm -hmm. okay, how mm -hmm. are we going to do this? Let's do it this way. If we didn't try it this way, let's go another route. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I get that. That is my therapy. Yeah. Like, unity, yeah. uh, prayer. Ooh, yeah. So I, I really like that now you affirm the point of checking with yourself because you have you. I have me. You have you. I have That's me. That's beautiful. Sometimes it's hard, but mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like, mm -hmm. you have to remember this. Like, yeah. Come, realign, yeah. center. Come yeah. back to center and respect. Okay, yeah. I have me. Yeah. Let's do it this way. That's Let's beautiful. Do this. Yes. That's beautiful. Thank well done. you. Well done. Thank well you done. for coming. Thanks for having me. That was amazing. Yeah. I feel so. Ah, I feel like now I can just go and. I feel like Wonder Woman. <laughs> I can just go. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm really like I can glad. do it all without I'm missing glad. out. <laughs> Thank you so much. Now, as a person, black, white, Puerto Rican, Asian, you deserve to live a full, healthy life where you feel safe, mm -hmm. valued, and affirmed. I hope you took away a little gem or a lot of insight from today's program because I certainly did. Leaving you with a little positivity. Be kind or be quiet. I'll see you next time. I appreciate you for watching.